Very glad to know you're still with us and the breakfast this morning and Plus TV Africa. Uh, we continue the conversation. This time we'll be looking at the headlines in the papers and with the help of our guest, we will um, make sense of what's behind it, um, why the screamers that we have. Uh, exactly. To help us do that, we have uh, legal practitioner Liberos Oshoma uh, joining us uh, on it. I'm sure a lot of the stories this morning are going to be centered still around the uh, looting and the aftermath of, you know, the looting and all the, you know, vandalization. Um, I'm hoping we could also get to talk about one trillion naira to, you know, put Lagos back on its feet somehow, some way. Um, driving around, you know, phase one, Admiralty, all the way down to uh, Jacon Bay and VI. Um, you can't doubt that the damage was, was, was terrible. Very some high. of the traffic lights, you know, are no longer working. Um, a lot of those, you know, little, little, you know, bits of infrastructure here and there that made life a little bit more bearable uh, for Lagosians are all gone. gone. Let, I let, also saw um, um, some of the banks, you know, sealed up their ATM spots, you know, because, you know, there's no longer ATM machines in those places. Quite unfortunate. Let, let's see how the papers are reporting it uh, this morning. We'll start with uh, the Punch newspaper. Uh, do we have Liberas join us already? Okay. Good morning and yes, thank I'm, you for yeah. joining us. Yeah, morning. Okay, we'll start with the Punch newspaper. Uh, the big one here has to do, as uh, you predicted, please go after looters. 40, 483 arrested in Lagos, Plateau, Anambra, others. We will fish out looters. Lagos, Oshu, Akwaibom Police Command's vow. 14 killed during looting of Kogi Adamawa Taraba Palliative uh, Warehouse houses. And then palliatives in warehouses, evidence Buhari isn't our problem. Uh, that's uh, the daughter speaking. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at other headlines and then uh, you can pick the one that you want to start with. Uh, just above the masthead, we have uh, this one that says, Lagos massive attacks plot to weaken Southwest economy. That's uh, governors from these areas speaking. You'll find details on page six of the paper. Nigeria considers supplying power to Chad and then renegotiate Nigeria, imbalance producing sorrow, poverty, Danjuma, others. And then just beside the masthead, you're looking at the one that says, uh, annual capital flight in telecoms. I'll take that again. Annual capital flights in telecom sector now $216 billion, so says the uh, federal government. Ex-JAM registrar awarded 7.3 billion naira contract without due process. Interesting development there. Uh, let's go to the bottom and see what's um, captured. Those that um, looted with their loots are on the front page. Uh, Kere Dolu, Abiodu condemn Ibo quit notice video says it's senseless. Ogun, Oyo reopened schools. Lagos public institutions remain shut. Uh, generator mechanic arrested for stealing 7 million naira car in Ogun. There are so many headlines. More, of course, we need to take this one from the grieving mom. It says, friends prevented soldiers from going away with my son's buddy in Lekki. I saw that video this morning because I was That's rushing good. to get to work. I couldn't watch it all. I intend to go watch it, even though I know it's going to make me teary yeah. a bit. Uh, let's bring you in now, um, Mr. Shama. Which of these headlines would you want to start with? Let, let me start from that. Uh, the last one, friends prevented uh, soldiers from taking away my son's body. Uh, I, I listened to it yesterday and, um, uh, and that's why I said that if the government, you know, chase this narrative of um, uh, nobody was killed, or let anybody who believes that it's their people were killed should come out, then it will show that government is truly not ready for reconciliation. Reconciliation should start from, you know, producing the soldiers that fired the shot. We also know that um, when governments, you know, when army, even police, you know, goes to disrupt activities like that, like it happened in, um, in Zaria with the Shite. There were allegations that they took away, you know, some bodies. And so this also had put a lie to the, the uh, narrative by the state government that nobody was killed 
and that uh, because there were no dead bodies. And that's why I believe that if we truly want to reconcile people, the first thing is be justice. And what is justice? Justice is, you know, the fact that people died, it's painful. Properties have been burnt. Properties have been looted. It's painful. But how do you, you know, serve justice? By ensuring that those people who cause havoc, you know, are brought to book. But to start from the military, that, you know, whose action de um, uh, caused the degeneration. Once that happens, people naturally, some will even volunteer information to you. By the time you shade your own and go after others, it shows that you are not, you are totally not ready to, to chase up, pursue, or to the path of reconciliation. Then um, I will go to the headline, um, Lagos State uh, Southwest Governor saying the attack on Lagos is uh, meant to weaken uh, the Southwest. Uh, Lagos um, uh, massive attack plot to weaken Southwest economy. That's the governors. I laugh. I laugh. It shows that truly our leaders still do not understand the import of what is happening. When youth protest in Casina against insecurity and maybe destroy properties, is it meant to weaken Casina? The injustice, like um, uh, uh, T.Y. Danjuma said, the imbalance, the injustice is producing sorrows and poverty. So governors should try to balance the inequality. They should try to balance the, the uh, poverty in the land. You saw how people went to loot warehouses. Where you also saw the fact that those uh, uh, COVID palliatives, other countries are in stage three of distribution of palliative. We are still in stage one, and we are telling a lie that these products were meant to be distributed days after, or sometimes in October. This is COVID that started in March in Nigeria. Lockdown that started in March. So it means that our government are still not ready to, you know, tell themselves the truth until they, they are ready to tell them this, uh, serve this truth. Nobody, nobody will believe them. It's, it's quite unfortunate. All right. Um, pretty interesting uh, um, views there. Let's move over to the This Day newspapers, uh, see what we can also find over there. One of them is from the president, um, and it's, uh, of course, uh, asking uh, uh, protesters to... Uh, uh, pleads rather for peace. Right? They say, uh, again, Buhari pleads for peace, assures victims of NSAR's protest of justice. Um, it also warns looting will erode confidence of foreign investors. Uh, coordinated attacks targeted at weakening Southwest economy, say governors and ministers. And um, the, um, also on the, this day from Bajabia Milam, Lagos needs one trillion naira to rebuild damaged infrastructure. There's also one of the headlines here that says um, police need 10 billion naira to rebuild burnt stations and barracks in Lagos State. Banks count losses to hoodlums, say 67 branches were destroyed. And um, one or two others that we can find on the This Day newspapers, no justification for shooting lucky protesters, says Tinubu. Um, insurers move to assess damage for claims payment. That's um, the final one that we're taking on the This Day newspapers this morning. Libra Sushum, over to you. Yeah, um, when this protest started, uh, I did say, uh, this was um, my last thought on the um, previous segment. When this protest started, I did say that it would cost our leaders anything. It could not cost the police anything to say we are sorry. It would cost, it wouldn't have cost them anything, just like we saw the, the, the spread in Europe and America now. So take a kneel to say, look, we are truly sorry. Do you know what it is? Do you know how touchy it will be for the young people in America to see their parents, to see the, the, their uncles, to see their elders going on one knee to say we are sorry for failing you. It would have averted all of this. At that point, you said you needed the leaders of the youth to talk with you. If the leaders were not talking with you, they had parents, 
did you take a step forward by holding town hall meetings with your parents so that they can talk to their world? The answer was no. I, I, I was at one of the protest grounds. I tried talking to some young men, and they told me, look, the other one, if you cannot support us, leave us in peace. That could tell you how much anger, you know, that was brewing at that time. But we missed that opportunity. Now, everybody that is talking, but there'll be a Miller, one trillion naira to rebuild damaged infrastructures in Lagos. They had opportunity to go around, to begin to hold town hall meetings. They all sat down in Abuja. The House of Assembly members had opportunity to go around, to talk to the parents, hold town hall meetings in your constituency. No, they were comfortable in their homes and accusing youth who were protesting of blocking roads, uh, of uh, depriving other or others of, of, of uh, assessing their, their livelihood. But now we are where we are. They also seem not to understand the essence, the impact of this. Justice should be two ways. I have consistently maintained justice to be two ways. It is good that the president is saying, you look, justice should be said to all parties concerned. And one of the ways you should start justice is to ensure that the army that caused that sparked the fire, the officials in government in Abuja that sparked the fire. We want to see government start from there, start justice from there. When you kill somebody, the fact that you are on trial would bring back the dead, but it helps to assuage the 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 the, the bereaved family. Justice is indeed being served. Okay. But when you now begin to tell them justice will be served, justice will be served, but you protect your own, where you're looking for the looters, it shows that truly your justice, your, your compass of justice is a one-sided one. Right. And what it means, people are going to keep this in their bank of, uh, in, in, their, in their deposits, they are going to deposit this in their bank of, um, of, uh, of, of knowledge or whatever you call it. And years from now, people will come up. A little spark also. People will say, well, that was how they killed people in Lekki, and nothing happened. All right. Let, let's uh, see what uh, The Guardian has this morning. Um, I was looking at it while you were talking. Um, it's still on the looting, but there's a particular uh, um, rider that I want to draw your attention to. But first, looting continues nationwide. That's how uh, The Guardian is uh, putting it this morning. It has uh, about five riders to it. Youths risk debt over expired foods, drugs. It also has many killed, many injured. And then Abuja Adamawa Taraba Kogi under attack. Navdak Kaduna urges caution. Serap ask ICPC to probe um, hoarded palliatives. I, I want you to speak on the concern being raised by NAPDAG and then uh, expired uh, products that uh, is being taken away and likely to be consumed. Uh, what, what, what is your fear with this development? Yeah, um, first and foremost, and that's why I always talk about justice, to compass. Somebody kept those palliatives in a warehouse and allowed them to expire. Somebody received those palliatives for distribution. Somebody did not distribute those palliatives that to the people that uh, it was uh, meant for. So if in the process, people broke into the warehouse and took those palliatives in domain, in Domi, inspired food, and they took those palliatives and died in the process. The way you start justice is by ensuring that people who will house those palliatives and refuse them from getting to the people that they are meant for. You start trial from there to ensure that it serves as a deterrent. Next time, nobody, nobody will will house goods, food that are meant for the common man. What is it? The appellate people donated some of these things. Government bought some of it. So why deprive your people? It is the same way you receive a budget for a project. 
you warehouse the budget. You do not just collect interest on it. You leave it in an interest yielding account. You have deprived the people of the uh, uh, project that money is meant for. At the end of the day, if it is a road, people will die on that road as a result of its bad state, and nobody will be prosecuted. Nobody will be investigated. And right. so, when there is crisis like this, all of those bottled up anger will force people to go on the street and begin to wreak havoc on other innocent persons. And, and so, and that's why it is not just us to warn. It is good to warn the people to say, look, don't, do not, some of these goods are expired. But it is not enough. It shouldn't end there. We should also demand for justice by insisting that those people who kept those goods, the goods there and did not distribute them, then also you should bring them to book. How right. will you, a, 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 I mean, or even let's assume that people don't expired goods or government went to buy expired goods. People who bought expired goods all right, uh, let's see if we can um, capture some headlines again. Uh, this one is from The Guardian. Why 15% budget allocation to health is tall order uh, that's uh, by the federal government. I'll take that again. Why 15% budget allocation to health is tall order set, uh, by federal government? That uh, is a tricky one. Uh, a couple of writers to that one too. 246 budgeted naira budgeted for one month medical care of every nigerian uh, in 2021 i'll take that again 246 naira budgeted for one month medical care of every nigerian in 2021 concerns over no direct allocations for covid-19 future pandemics fg allocates 4.526% of budget to sector compared to 12.5% by South Africa. Uh, Mr. Shuma, I wanted to speak on this this one. Yeah. 15% budget allocation to health you, is tall order by FG. Yeah, um, but listen to it. Even if it is 5% that is budgeted to health in Nigeria, if we indeed, in all honesty, because in, in other clients, once money is budgeted, it is deemed appropriated. If we appropriate the money budgeted to every sector, to the last cover in Nigeria, you will be marveled at how far we can go in developing our public institutions. Because the state also will budget. The local government will make budget for this. For state health institutions, local government will budget, make budget. For primary health institutions. If all of those budgets are implemented and appropriated, funds appropriated, you'd be shocked at the developmental stride that we would have achieved. The problem with our budget is the fact that money is budgeted, it is not appropriated. And so, when I mean appropriation, you say you will release five billion to uh, let's say, the National Hospital for Drugs by June. By June, the Central Medical uh, 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 Director of uh, the National Hospital will be going cap in hand to bet for that money. At the end of the day, in some cases, he will have to buy some of these goods on credit. When the eventually, the funds eventually come, inflation would also have affected it. Uh, corruption on his part also he will take out some. At the end of the day, what will eventually be used to buy the drugs will not be up to one billion out of five billion naira. And so that's where the problem, let's start from, that's where the problem is. Let's start from actually implementing the budget, the letter. You notice mm -hmm. over time they tell you our budget was implemented 10%, 30%. I've never even implemented it 20%. And so you budget 50%. For health, fifteen percent for health, and you implement thirty percent. That means the budget out of that fifteen percent, you have only appropriated or implemented four point five percent of the budget. So, leaving a deficit of eleven point five percent. So, right. when that happens, 
what you are going to find is this cry and deficit, lack of infrastructure everywhere. That is why, you know. All right, uh, we need to uh, see if we can take one I think the more Tribune should come we wrap, up next. Wrap things up. Yeah, yeah the Nigerian Tribune uh, comes up next. Uh, one of the stories there says the Pope. Uh, of course, is urging prayers for Nigeria. Um, uh, says uh, Pope wants prayers for Nigeria. Also, Lagos attacks. Uh, we've taken this for about from about three of the major newspapers uh, this morning. Lagos attacks meant to weaken Southwest economy. Um, wonders at ease of arson despite proximity of security. Disregard threat of violence. I carry Dulu tells Ibos. Um, I think, um, Libo Sushoma, I would like you to speak on that um, once I'm done with uh, sharing the stories. Killed protesters and policemen will get justice. Fish out soldiers who shot at Leki protesters, says uh, Tunde Bakari. And uh, looting of warehouses continues. Dogara's house vandalized. 229 arrested suspects face prosecution in Lagos. That's, I don't think we, I, I don't want us to take too much time. Um, Libo Sushoma, I want you to speak on something that has happened in the last few days, and that is the um, uh, threat, you know, and some messages that have come from some persons across the country, one of them not even in Nigeria, threatening uh, tribal violence and uh, the likes towards the Igbo people and, and uh, you know, things like that. There's also a person from Northern Nigeria, I just wouldn't want to mention, you know, these names, uh, so I don't give them more publicity than they deserve. Um, who have also continued to promote these tribal statements um, and all of that. Um, what, what is your response to that uh, this morning? Uh, let me start by uh, saying that um, this, um, this um, was, I don't want to mention his name also, uh, the man from uh, the eastern region, the leader of uh, IPOB. Uh, allegedly of IPOB, who started this um, exciting statement also. There's need for also content, you know. I don't blame him. Government gave him uh, prominence by even, you know, recognizing him, arresting him, and, you know, government gave him prominence, you know. And so you see him spill by at every, most of his broadcast. And so others have copied from him. Justice, like I always say, should be two ways. Others, regions are copying, copying from him now. You see one, one, one irritant in, in somewhere in London. Also, they are both in London. Another one from the north also threatening violence. They also, these people, nobody should take them seriously because if government, if government is able to do what they ought to do and when they ought to do it, nobody will listen to these charlatans. You saw the unity in the protest. When the soldiers also came, they didn't ask, who is Yoruba, who is Igbo, who is Hausa? They shot at innocent protesters. And so, nobody will also tell me that it is, is the uh, Igbos that went to attack Oba Palace, because the palace is, is um, domicile in the heart of where you have a lot of Yoruba residents. But that said, what it means is that hunger Hunger does not know tribe. The way the people in Jos, Kaduna, Kato, Sokoto, Zampara are hungry now in the papers, Dogara's house. Is it Igbo people that are attacking Dogara's house? Or is it Yoruba people that are attacking Dogara's house in the north? It is in Bauchi. It is people, it is his people who are fed short change that will attack him. In, in uh, uh, Calabar, Udo Udomas, Udo Udo Maikbe. No, but Udo Maikbe's house that was attacked, is it Igbo people, is it Yoruba people, or is it Hausa people that went to attack uh, yeah. the south? In Oka, the places that we attacked, it, was it Yoruba people that went there or Hausa? But the people who have been consistently shortchanged are the ones who are looking at their leaders and saying enough is enough. And so, why we, we feel sad, I feel very bad the, that the private properties will have to go over this mayhem. We should hold our leaders accountable, even their language. Apart from Tinubu, who has been reported in almost all the papers saying the end fast protester is a fundamental lesson in democracy, justice must be served, and that those soldiers who fired the shot must be produced. 
All other people, uh, the statement coming from the Thank you, South East, uh, well, Southwest governors, for example, it's not palatable. The statement coming from uh, uh, others is also not, you know. Right. Thank you very palatable. much, Mr. Libora Soshoma. I'm afraid that's the much time will permit us on the breakfast this morning. Thank you uh, for your time and your thoughts. I All right, I guess uh, we've lost him yes. uh, to a network. It's been an interesting conversation this morning. Uh, the two uh, positions that was taking on the issue of uh, looting and, um, you know, uh, what that means, the economic impact on um, Nigerian, Nigerians generally. It's, it's imperative that we must stop the looting. Uh, we must do that. For those on that... On both sides, no? Yeah, so... Um, of course, of course. <laughs> the liberals but in have mentioned current, something. In this, in um, this uh, current situation, we cannot put uh, people um, who have suffered. There was a lady I was watching. She was sounding very brave, but you could see she was heartbroken. Uh, not just one of her shops. Three of her shops were looted. So if you're watching me and you're one of those who uh, participated in these acts, please, you're not hurting the government. You're hurting fellow Nigerians like you who have suffered and labored to grow their businesses. So have a that. rethink. I agree and with stop that. It. You know, and, and you know, I, you know, I was saying earlier. You know, th we need to find ways to reach out to these, you know, people. Um, liberals earlier said it's their way of expressing their own anger. You know, but there has to be ways that we can spread the message across to these people to make them understand that violence yeah, never has to be the, the answer. Government. You're Looting hurting never the really people. has to be the answer. Um, yeah, there's we, a message that I saw. There's a message that I saw on Twitter a few days ago. A guy he was, he, he he put it out in Yoruba, uh, where he was um, asking those people, you know, the, you know the poor. I, I really I'm trying to be careful what I describe them as. <laughs> um, asking them, you know, to be more sensible when people try to advise them, you know, into looting right, or into yes. violence and all of that. So right. I think that message should go across in different languages, you know, in the boss parks, um, in every way that we can get across to these people. Let them know that you know they are doing more damage to themselves than you know than they are to the government. As um, usual, generally. the director is whispering in our ears, so we have to wrap things up now. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. Absolutely. It, it's, uh, it's been a very enlightening conversation. I hope we served you well. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, same station. But in the meantime, you can find us on all our social media platforms. That will be shown on your screen in a bit. Exactly. It's at Plus TV Africa. Remember uh, to stay with us. In